Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're making this really cool Fremen underground layer scene. Let's get started. All right, so here we are in a fresh instance of Blender. I'm gonna hit A to select all and X to delete, and then I'm gonna immediately recreate what I just deleted by creating a camera. I'm gonna jump into my camera's view and I'm gonna go to the little pop-out menu, go to view and tick lock camera to view. That will allow me to just change my view just straight through the perspective um, of my camera. So I'm just gonna line things up. Get a good sense of what I want here. Um, I'm gonna zero out the Y rotation so it's nice and level. And I'll set the Z to, Z to 90, real even. And I'll keep, I'll keep the rotation X at 85, something like that for now. I think that should be good. Um, now I'm gonna untick lock camera to view and then I'm gonna roll my mouse wheel just to expand the view a bit so it fills my frame. Then I'm gonna come down with the camera selected, go to the camera tab and I'm going to turn up something called Passbar 2. It's right here. It's this one under viewport display. And this just darkens the outside of the frame so that my camera really just helps me focus on what my camera sees. So I'll just set this up to something like, you know, 0.966 or something. Um, and great. And I'm also going to change my lens. I'm going to come out to a 35. So I'm a little bit wider on my focal length. So I can see a little bit more of the surrounding space. Now, the idea with this is I'm going to have a really kind of dramatic hallway with some shafts of light coming in and some sand on the floor and like sandstone walls and stuff with carvings and things. So I think I want to put my camera a bit low looking up so I get this like dramatic sense of the space. So I might go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to open up here. I'm going to right click on lock camera to view because I'm going to jump in and out of this mode a lot and I'm going to uh, move it to my quick favorites. So if you click that there, now whenever you hit Q in your 3D viewport, you get your little quick favorites menu and this you can put anything in this. So I'm going to put lock camera to view in that. So now you can see it's active and I'm going to just drop my camera down a little bit and then uh, rotate up a touch. So I've got this kind of upward dramatic look. Okay, now I'm going to go sh shift A and I'm going to create a plane. This is going to serve as the floor of my space and I'll scale it on the X and just move it up a little bit. We're going to have a bit of a hallway, so I'll keep it fairly narrow for now. And we might see into the distance, but I'm just going to do a, a little segment here. Um, I'm going to pop out of my camera's view and now I'm going to make the walls and I'm just going to kind of rough this stuff in. So I'm going to create a cube, grab Y, bring this over and scale X. So S and then X and bring that over like that and G and Z to bring it up like so. And uh, I'll go into edit mode. And I'll go to face mode. You can also just hit three on your, on your number row at the top of your keyboard, one, two, and three, alternate between those. So here we go. And I'm just gonna grab this, grab Z, we're gonna pull up. And I'm just gonna jump back into my camera view. I wanna look at how high these walls go because uh, I wanna see a little bit of like an arced ceiling here. So I might keep it there, that should be good. I'm gonna shift D to duplicate and Y to grab this thing on the Y and move it right over. And I'll just intersect it a little bit with the floor. It's good. Um, and then down here, I think I'm gonna have a little like gap um, and then another like archway, I think would be cool. So I might shift D and X, Maybe bring these guys in like this. And then I might, let's see, grab this and shift D and then rotate Z 90 to rotate it and then grab X and I'll just line it up a bit with the wall and push this out here. I might create a little bit of a gap, shift D and Y, bring this over here and a little bit of a gap there. And I might do the same just for here, just in case uh, this affects the lighting a little bit. Um, okay, so I need a bigger uh, floor plane. So I might uh, go into edit mode and hit uh, number two on my keypad to get edge mode and grab X and I'll just fill out this zone here like that. Um, and then I'll do control R, roll my mouse wheel once. So control R is how you set a loop cut. Roll on my mouse wheel to get two and then I'll click to commit and then S and X and I'll bring these guys in a bit. And then I'll grab this one and this one and hit E to extrude. And then um, I'll hit escape and then S and Y to scale out on the Y. And that will spread those guys out. Uh, you can also just click and move them. But anyways, now we've got a nice space. Okay, so now what I want to do is set a bit of an archway. And I want the archway, I think, to be right here. And the way I want this to work, I'm going to shift D and grab Y and scale Y. I'll bring this in. Is I'm going to have like 
two columns like this. And then I'll put the archway in between those columns. So I'm going to have a little arch here. So let's create that next. Uh, let's see, to create an arch, what we want to do is I'm going to grab a mesh circle. Let's grab this up so we can look at it. Rotate X, let's see, rotate Y, 90 degrees. And I'll go into edit mode. And if I go to vertex mode, you can see that this circle is made up of a bunch of vertices. And what I want to do is I'm going to delete the bottom half. So I'll select all those and then X to delete and click for vertice. And then I'll hit A to select all and E, and we're going to go back on the X. There we go. Cool. I've got a bit of an arch. So I'll grab Z, grab X, bring it back. And I'm just going to kind of rough this out. Grab X, just full stop to jump to the object itself. And I'll just line this up. Might line it up at the front because that's where the origin is. And grab Z, bring it up a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to just bring it over a little bit just to center it. And then I think I might carry this archway across the whole thing. So I might hold down Alt and click this just to grab this one edge right here, this whole edge. And if I grab X and bring it forward, we could do something like this, right? We've got this archway that covers the whole span. Um, and then maybe it stops here. I think that could be cool. But I can grab this and E and bring that over. Grab this and E and bring that over. All right, let's pop out and have a look at what this is shaping up like. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm going to grab this edge and grab X and just line it up over here. And yeah, it'll stop, I think, with this one. And I think we'll have like a vaulted space here. So I'm going to have to create roofing segments to cover regions so I can then punch holes to control where I want the light to come through. So I might go ahead and do that a little bit here. So I'm going to, let's go Shift A, Mesh Plane, grab Z, and then grab Shift Z just to slide it over without moving it up and down. And I'm just going to line this up a little bit so it intersects. And then I'm going to scale Y that there. And then Shift D, Y, bring this over here. I'll just line this up, just checking to see. I don't see, yep, those seams, good. Um, now we're also probably going to want to block off these backs, but we'll get to that. Um, and then in here, I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh Cube, grab X, bring this back, grab Z, bring this up, scale this up, scale Z, uh, so grab X, Go into edit mode, go to face mode, grab this face and drag this out. And what I want to do here is I'm just creating like a vaulted ceiling. So I'm going to grab this face and delete it. So now I've got this sort of box that raises up. And what I can do is I want to punch out this section like this. So I might just hit control R and create um, maybe two, three loop cuts. How many do I want? I'll go for I'll go for four like that, and then I'll go to edge mode. And I'll grab these two edges, and I'll grab Z, and just bring that up just so it's above this guy. And then I want to prevent light from coming through here, so I'll go into edit mode, go to face mode, and then I'll grab this edge and hit E, and then Z, and just bring it right up. And it's okay if this geometry is a bit messy. This is just for blocking light, so that should be good. All right, now I've got this open area, which light we'll be able to come into, but we can worry about what we want to put in that a little bit later. Um, for now, what we could do is we could maybe grab this whole edge and grab Z and just bring that down for now. We'll block that off entirely. Okay, and I'm going to switch from object mode to sculpt mode. Well, sculpt mode is great for just shaping things out, especially organic stuff, um, which is what we're going to be doing here. We're just going to stick with the draw um, brush. And I'll turn my strength all the way up to one. And I'm going to make sure I've got the plus active, which means we're going to be kind of increasing, like raising things up. If you switch to the minus, you're going to be pushing things down. And I think this is all pretty good. So let's just have a look. Uh, also, we're going to turn on Dino Topo. That's OK. We can click OK. And what this is going to do, Dino Topo will basically create more mesh where we need it. So, you know, this thing, this mesh doesn't have any. It's like one single plane, really. So this is going to begin to create more mesh for us as we actually sculpt. So you can see this is what it looks like. So it's probably a bit too strong. So I'm going to pipe that down. I'll go to 0.5 and I'll just come back here. 
Again, probably still a bit too strong, 0.2. But I just want a little bit of a rise along the edges here. Yeah. Now a lot of it's based on how um, close uh, or like your view is to it. Um, so if I turn my strength up for this further away stuff, I'll get more of a consistent feel. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to create some detail along the actual structure. So I'm gonna leave this mode, we're gonna head back to the walls themselves. And let's think about how we want this thing to look. I, I loved in the movie, in Dune 2, there were these hallways where they had these like alcoves that were inset with lots of writing. So I might do something similar to that. I'm gonna go Control R and I'm gonna create a couple of loop cuts like this. So I've got these different layers. And then what I think I'll do is I will select, I'll select each of these again, actually. Let's hit undo so they're selected. And I'm gonna hit Control B to bevel. And this will split each of these edges. There we go. So now I can have these little alcoves. And what I can do with this is I can extrude these guys in, or we could extrude these in. Which one do I want to do? I think I'll extrude these guys in. So I'm going to hit E, and I'm just going to pull back. Um, and then we could make like an alcoved area. I wonder if I should inset this with I and just go in a bit like that. And then maybe scale X just to push it out some. And then E and push in like this. We also had some like clear dividers, I think. Put one with a loop cut right here. And then control B and bevel it and split it out like this. And then E, and then I'll just move this thing out like that. I think that's kind of cool because that creates some really interesting shapes. I might inset this one here and I'll scale X and scale uh, like that. And then E and go in. Now we're gonna need to bevel these edges and roughen things up a bit. So let's go ahead and just add a bevel in for now. I'll click here for bevel. Uh, we're going to have some weird edges, so the bevel is not going to work exactly right. So I need to switch this from offset offset to percent. And now it will give me bevels kind of in a brute force mode. Now, to help me see the shape of this thing as I make it, I'm going to switch my view mode from the standard flat shade to a matte cap material. I'll switch to the red one. I find that really helps things pop. And then I'm going to turn on cavity. And with cavity, I'm going to switch the type to both. And I'm just going to turn up the ridge and valley on all these and that will really like make all the edges, all the ridges, all the valleys, everything's going to pop. And it just helps as you shape things out to kind of see what you're looking at. Um, I'm going to duplicate this same system over to the other side. So um, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to hit shift D and then I'm going to scale on the Y negative one that will flip the whole thing. And then I can just bring this whole wall segment over. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right, cool. Now we're good to have some detail on these guys. So I'm going to control R again, do a couple of loop cuts like that. Control B to bevel those and then E and we're just going to escape and S to scale, but I'm going to hit shift Z. I don't want to scale up. So I'm just going to scale on the X and the Y. So holding shift and hitting X, Y, or Z turns that one off whenever you're doing a uh, manipulation like this. Two of these maybe inset them and then E to push them in. That's pretty good. Uh, I might again duplicate this, bring it over so they match. And then be good to have some detailing across here on the other side. So I might make a few loop cuts, control B to bevel those, and then E and S. It creates some interesting shapes. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> cool. All right, now we've got the roof segment. We can go into edit mode with this, control R, throw a few loop cuts here as well. Control B to bevel these guys, and then E and Z, just bring them up. All right, great. Now we've got an interesting space. Things are looking really cool. Now we're gonna to have to create some really interesting materials and some good lighting to really sell this space. So let's start figuring out some lighting and some basic blocking of these materials. So I'm gonna switch over to rendered view, and I'm gonna just for the moment, turn off scene world and just pick one of these other ones here. And let's see, I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is get a shaft of light that's gonna kind of come down through here. So to do that, I'm going to need to punch a hole somewhere. So I'm going to grab my roof segment and I'm going to go into edit mode and let's see, I'll, I'll select some of these like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit P to separate by selection. And then I've got this new piece of geo here and I'm just going to turn this off and hide it. And now I've got this hole in my ceiling. So if I position a sun lamp, so I'm going to go shift A, light, sunlight, 
And I'm just going to rotate this off a little bit. And I can rotate around like that. And that's going to start to fill this thing out. OK, I'm going to switch over to cycles real quick and just see how this is playing out with these light shafts. OK, so it's looking cool, but definitely I'm feeling the squareness of this hole that we've punched. So we need to put some irregularity into this hole. So let's switch back to flat shaded mode and just have a look at what we've done up here. And I'm going to take this hole and I'm going to, let's see, how do I want to do this? I might focus in on it and um, let's see, I'm going to go, actually, I'll go up to the bit that we've cut out of it. There we go. And then with this bit, I'm going to control R and create some loop cuts. And then I'll create like a smaller opening here, delete those faces. And then what I want to do with this is I'm going to sculpt it. So I'm going to go to sculpt mode and I'll just put this on draw or something. And I'm going to turn on dyno topo as well so that I get the, the increased geometry. And I'm just going to sculpt this thing. I might switch to negative so that it goes up. And then I might grab one of these, like the grab tool, and I can pinch these around. All right, so let's grab the floor. And I'm just going to pull up my shader editor, and we're going to get a new shader. And I'll just make sure I've actually got the floor selected. And I'll click New to create a new material. I'll call this Sand. And we're going to give this a base color that's a bit of a golden, golden hue here. And I want to create a really dense bump. So I'm going to create a noise texture. And with this noise texture, I'm going to pipe this into a bump node. Take the factor into the height and then the normal into the normal. Now I'm going to take the scale up to something huge, like 600, maybe even bigger, go for 1,000. And then I want to take the distance down to maybe 0 0.01, 0 0.1. Uh, yeah, 0 0.1 looks pretty good. Now, what I want to do is take the roughness right up as well, uh, or maybe down. Might be good to have a little bit of sheen on these because each grain is going to be quite reflective. Um, let's see. I might turn the detail up and the roughness up as well. Let's try doing that. Let's come over here, go into edit mode, and I will grab a few of these guys. And I'll delete them. All right, so now that we've got more holes, it's really starting to fill the space out. And I'm wanting to see some sandstone material on these guys. So let's start getting that working. Um, so I'm going to switch back over to here. I'll select one of these guys, and I'll switch over to Eevee so I can bounce back and forth. So I'm going to click New to create a new shader for this. And I'll call this Sandstone. And I'm going to go ahead and assign it to all the other bits in here. The Material tab. Grab the sandstone material, click the drop down, copy material to select it. Let's just change the color real quick so we can see what still needs it. All right, so this guy still needs it. I'm going to take the sandstone main color, I'll bring its saturation down a bit and give it more of like a, you know, like an orangish color, I think is kind of what I want. And I want to go for a noise texture again. And I want to grab a bump once more. And I'm going to take the factor into the height and then the normal into the normal. Then we're going to take this scale right up. And it's really cool to get these swirl patterns with it. That's so nice. Um, and, and that's with the distortion at 2.4. I didn't know that was default. That's interesting. Uh, distance will go to 0 0.1 just to bring it down a little bit. Maybe 0.01. That's probably too much. 0.05. Found some Fremen writing by Googling. I'll give you a link to this image here. So I'm going to use this and use it to inscribe the walls. This is actually the litany of fear uh, that the uh, that Paul's mother is always saying. Written in the Fremen language. Very cool. All right. So what we want to do for this is we want to inscribe it into the bump. So I'm going to grab this noise texture and we're going to mix these together. So I'm going to go for a mix uh, color and I'll drop this in here. And then I'll take this color and I'll plug it into the second input. And I'll just set this to multiply because it's black. It'll be able to just, you know, multiply straight in. 
and it will automatically start to get something, but you can see the letters are gigantic. So okay. I need to come over here to the texture coordinate node and we're going to use the, I could use the UV. That's probably a good way of doing this. So I could say vector UV and then um, grab a mapping node or what we could do as well as we could just come in here and grab the panels that we want. So I could split my view and switch this over to the, let's see, UV editor. And I've got this one here and I'm going to you and unwrap that particular one. And then I can say, all right, I want to include, I'm going to rotate Y90 and scale this right up. And let's make sure I'm not locked to my camera's view. I'm just going to turn off all of my display widgets just to kind of see if I can see this. It's going to be quite small and I want this to be stronger. So what we need to do with this is we need to increase the distance of our bump way up. And then we're going to need to mix these guys in in a different way. So. I'll need to take this noise texture and feed it into a color ramp like this. And instead of going pure black to pure white, we need to drop it right down. So I'll take this black and I will increase it right up to something that's more of like a light gray. And now uh, what we can do with this hopefully is get some better results. I'm scaling it on the X. I'm just looking at the, um, shape of these letters just to make sure they look right. And then I can just hit S to scale the whole lot up and that'll make the engravings smaller. Um, and now I can take the distance up to something like 10. Strength up to five. And you can see how that's really gonna start cutting this out. Although I might invert this. I want these numbers, I want these letters going in and I know it doesn't look like they are. Oh no, they are. Turn invert back off. Um, what about 50 on the, does it feel like it's doing anything past one? Now with this one, we can just keep pushing this closer to white and it will make it less and less obtrusive. So we just want a little bit of difference between these two. So we have that sandstone texture and then this etching, we want this to be quite strong. And that's cool. <laughs> Take the strength down. Looks cool. And we could also have this um, be like a painted texture. Um, but First thing I want to do is I want to get rid of all this drawing on the walls like this, this like small stuff. So I'm going to select all and I'll select everything except for this big one that we've just done. And I'm going to grab it. Um, actually, I'm just going to scale it, scale it down to zero. And then I'm going to stick it somewhere right down in the white area. So I know it's not going to be affected and that will clear all that up. And now what we can do is I can grab individual panels and decide what do I want to have this writing on it. So I think we might need to take this back just to one and then use some coloration as well. So I could use the same system and we could just multiply it in. So I could grab a mix color and I could drop this here and I could use this as the factor. And we could just take a dark, maybe just a black and that will color it black Let's swap these. Yep. And that'll help. And now what I want to do is I want to come in here and I'm actually going to add a brick texture um, to this because I want to have like some blocks. So I've got a brick texture here and another mix RGB node. And um, what we can do is just insert this straight in to the pipe. So I just plug this in here, plug this in here. and with this brick texture. So I've set the first color just to white. I've left it at white. Second one, I put it down a little bit to a bit of a gray value and the mortar I brought up, not to full white, but just a little bit gray. And then I'm multiplying that in to uh, the color or to the um, the bump map that we already had. Um, with this as well, I've set the scale to 15. I want these blocks to be quite large. Um, and I've set the height uh, to 0.7 and the width to 0.8. So they're just big. They're really big kind of large brick objects. Um, and they're mixing in um, right over here. So I can, 
you know, choose this factor to fade them off a little bit. But I like the way this looks. I think this is kind of cool to have these like rows and these uh, columns here. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and you learned some cool things. And uh, yeah, uh, please check out the Patreon and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and all that stuff. You can join on YouTube as well. And if you join, you get access to all the uncut material. On this particular tutorial, uh, the uncut version runs for about an hour and a half. So there's a lot of extra material of me going through and experimenting and trying things. So if you like that stuff, head over there, check that out. You can also get this project file along with the other project files from this month if you join up this month over at Patreon in the second tier and up. So thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Special thanks to all those who support already on Patreon and who have joined on YouTube. And thanks to you for watching. Really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Oh, <laughs>